Okay, we're studying Hilchot Shabbat. Perek Yod Gimel, Halacha Yod Aleph. We're um, at the end of Chodesh Tevet, Tavshin Pe Aleph. Perek Yod Gimel. That's... Uh, it's uh, January um, 2021. Okay. Haya Kane Al Haares. והיה הקרסה השני מונח בארץ, והשליחו לפניו, וחזר בגבי הקרסה שהיה מונח, והשליחו לפניו על דרך זו, עד שהעביר החפץ כמה מילים, פתו לפי שלא עקר החפץ כולו מעל גבי הארץ. Interesting halacha. Um, let's say you have some sort of spear um, or some sort of rod. Let's let's look. Let's use this as an example. It's a pen. But it's, it, it, it can illustrate it nicely. Um, so let's say this is Rashut Harabim. This is Rashut Harabim, right? This purple surface is Rashut Harabim. Now, obviously, if I pick up the object. And I walk with it, and then I place it down. That's Akira in Hanaha in Rishut Rabim. That's Ha'avara, Dalit Amot Rishut Rabim. That's Yisur Deoraita. Well, let's say I did something else. I picked up one end of the object like this. Now, notice the second end is always on the ground, right? So I never picked up the object completely. Again, I only picked up part of the object. I'm going to use something else, make it be a little easier, just, okay, so now I pick this up. Notice the other end is always on the ground, and then I let it fall. And then I pick it up, and I let it fall. And I keep doing that, and you notice it's traveling across the Rishwet Rabim, right? It started here, I keep picking up the spear, or the rod, or whatever it is, and I let it fall. That's patura balasur. Since I never fully did akira for, 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 for akira to take place, it has to be a full akira. But when you only pick up one end of the object and you let the other end of the object stay on the ground, that's not akira. So again, akara chafes, bershut rabim, yalach bo pachot me arba mot. I'm sorry. No, that's the wrong one. Haya kane oromach, echa yose bo munach al haarez. A rod or a spear is lying down on the ground. You picked up one end of the spear. With the other end, as we said, always is on the ground. And then you, as we as we saw, you let it fall down to the other direction, right? So it's keep it's traveling, right? You don't let it fall back to where it came from. It fell back from where it came from. Then the Zohavara. But you let it fall to the other direction. Even if you do this and you manage to move the object several kilometers, patu. It's patu. Meaning patu rabalasur. Because you never fully lifted up the object from the ground. Interesting law. So let me explain this second case. I'm just going to use this Again, 
And this is Reshut HaRabim. Now we said that if you pick up the Kane this way, the bottom part is always on the ground. And therefore there's no Akira, right? And you can do this and make it travel a couple of kilometers. So you, you've carried an object from one part of Reshut HaRabim to another part of the Shutra Abim, and it's Patura Valasur, because there was no Akira. What about if you drag the object on the ground? You're dragging it. If you do that, Harambam says it's Hagyab, right? What's the difference? So he says, Sheham Galgel Okeru, because when you, for example, if you had a wheel and you rolled the wheel on the ground, that's considered Akira. Right? So to take a wheel and roll the wheel is Akira, but hold on. You never fully lifted the object from the ground. And I thought that if you don't fully lift the object from the ground, for example, like in this case, right? There's no Akira, and because there's no Akira, it's Patu. So why when you drag it, it's Hayab. How does that make any sense? You're not lifting the object off the ground. Similarly with the wheel. When you turn the wheel, always part of the wheel is on the ground. You never lift up the wheel. The answer is that in the case where I'm lifting the rod up, right, the bottom part of the rod that's touching this part, right? The part that's touching the ground, it's not moving in space. Notice, it's in the same spot it started in. You see that? Right? The only thing that moved is the rest of the rod. But the part that's on, the part that is not lifted from the ground is in the same place that it was prior to the lifting. You see that? It's never moving. So that's why it's not considered to be Akira. But if you're dragging it along, the entire object is moving at once. There's no part of the object that is not moving in a plane, a parallel to, let's say, parallel to the Shutera beam, right? It's always moving. Every part of the object is equally moving. So that's considered to be Akira because you're okay with the object where it was in the Rishwet Beam, and it's no longer there. It's now in a different place in the Rishwet Beam. So that's Akira, I meaning for Akira to happen, you don't have to actually lift it up in the air. So by dragging it, this part, again, the bottom part, if I drag it, the bottom part is not where it originally was. It may have been touching the Rishwet Beam the entire time, I'm dragging it, but it's not in the original point that it started out in the Rishut Harabim. So, so when I drag an object, the entire object moves relative to Rishut Harabim. And that's why it's Haya. That's why if you take a tire and you move a tire, the motion of the, of the, the mo movement of the tire along the Rishut Harabim is considered Akira. Okay. So again. <coughs> person, let's say, was in the Shut Ha'achid, and he did Akira of the object. He lifted up the object from the ground of the Shut Ha'achid. Now, at the time that he lifted the object, his intention was to put it on another corner in the room, also in the Shut Ha'achid. Shinim said, Zoha Akira, Akira Hamutarit. It comes out that when he originally did the Akira, of course, it's permissible to do Akira in the Shut Ha'achid, the Sorech Hanacha in the Shut Ha'achid. And then he changed his mind and he said, let me take this object outside. And he actually took the object to the Shutarabim. And let's say he put it down in the Shutarabim. That's Patur. 
מפני שלא הייתה עקירה ראשונה לך because when he originally uprooted the object, his mind, his intention in uprooting was to do something permissible. So the מלאכת מחשבת is missing here. There is no intention to do a מלאכה. נמסר כאן הנחה ולא עקירה. So you have a הנחה, the הנחה was done uh, with מלאכת מחשבת, with a proper intention, but the עקירה wasn't, and therefore you don't have a full מלאכה. Similarly, let's <coughs> say a person is walking in the Rishul Tarabim with this friend together. And you see something as you're walking on the ground, you pick it up and you put it on your friend who is also walking. As we said, you're both walking. So you pick up an object and you place it on your friend's back, for example. And he's walking, he didn't stop. And you're walking. <clears throat> and then when his friend finally comes to a standstill, as he's about to stop, he takes the object from his friend's back. He takes it back. So now you say, effectively, this guy just walked with his friend with this object, let's say a mile, let's say they walk. How is that patur? This is patur, oh, but they just moved an object an entire mile. Now, the friend who was walk, the friend on whom, on whose back, the object was placed, he didn't do akira, and he didn't do anacha, because he was always walking. So when the object was placed on his back, right, that's not considered to do to be akira, because the other person who picked the object off the ground did the akira. Now the person continued walking. He never came to a stop, so he also never did anacha. Okay, so the person was, was with the object on his back, he didn't do akira, he didn't do anacha. The second person, who placed the object on the back of the walking person did akira, but he didn't do hanacha because when he did the hanacha on the back of his friend, his friend was also walking. And we said hanacha means you have to come to a standstill in a particular place, but he was walking. You say, ah, oh, but later on the friend did hanacha, the one with the object on his back. No, because you, the, the person who originally placed the object on the back of his friend removed it from the back of his friend when his friend was still in a walking state and to do akira for a person in a walking state is not considered to be akira so therefore when he took the object back and now let's say he stands now he's holding the object in his hand and he stands so you say oh he just did akira from his friend's back and anaha because he's standing still no because when he did the akira from his friend's back his friend was walking again i want to summarize that long Reuven and Shimon are walking in the Shu Tarabim. Reuven picks up an object in the Shu Tarabim. Obviously, if Reuven now walks with an object in the Shu Tarabim and comes to a standstill, he did Akira, he did Hanacha. That's simple. Instead, he places the object, Reuven places the object on the back of Shimon, who's always walking. So when he places the object in the back of Shimon, since Shimon is always walking, there's no Hanacha. Before Shimon comes to a stop, Reuven takes the object off the back of Shimon. And now the Uven is standing still in the Shutarabim. So when he took the object off the back of Shimon, Shimon was walking and therefore that's not considered Akira. So in the first case, when the Uven placed object on Shimon's back, he did Akira. And now when he removes the object from Shimon's back, Technically, you would say he did Hanacha. No, he didn't. Because he did Akira from Shimon, who was walking. And that's not considered Akira. Right? It's a, um, how does it put Shari Yechkan Akira Belo Hanacha. So the original Akira was Akira Belo Hanacha. The second Akira was not even an Akira because, as we said, Shimon was walking. Had Shimon come to a standstill, and then the Uven takes the object from Shimon's back. The second Akira would be considered an Akira. Right. Now, the reason we emphasize the fact that Shimon, that the Uven took the object from Shimon's back before Shimon came to a standstill is because Shimon doesn't want to do, doesn't want any of this. 
Shimon doesn't want to do Akira, Shimon doesn't want to do Hanacha. Now, if Shimon stands still in the Shuta Rabin, technically he would be doing Hanacha, and therefore Shimon would have any Sudir Rabbanan. So the point of Reuven taking the object away from Shimon is so that Shimon doesn't do Yisur Dera Bana, right? So Reuven takes the object away from Shimon before Shimon comes to a standstill. So that, again, that second Akira is not an Akira because Shimon was walking, um, right? 